Hi there. Uh, there's 17 classrooms already on there. Okay, there's now 21. Uh, there's a bunch of you that are uh, that can actually get into the Hangout to join us if you want to be able to join into the Hangout. I know there's two URLs, uh, but if you're watching this on YouTube streaming, that works great. Uh, but uh, I would love if you, if any of the classrooms joining can find a way to actually join into the Hangout so we can hear questions live. Uh, there's now already 30 classrooms all watching this together. Uh, yesterday when we did a stream like this, we had 100 classrooms all at the same time. Uh, I wanted to welcome all of you there uh, out throughout the country and even beyond that are doing the Hour of Code this week. Uh, welcome to the third day of Computer Science Education Week. I'm here in New York City. Uh, by the way, my name is Hadi Partovi. I'm the creator of the Hour of Code. Uh, you know, this has been an amazing week. Uh, this week, the Hour of Code turned three years old. Uh, this whole campaign started as just a simple idea I had that you know, computer science is changing our world. It's changing everything around us from the phones we use or the computers we use all the way to how entertainment works and how communication works and how banking works and transportation. Yet our schools don't teach it. Uh, and Code.org started with the vision that every school, uh, every student in every school should be able to learn computer science. And the way this idea really spread the most has been through creating the idea of an hour of code and asking every student in every school in every country to try at least just one hour of coding and computer science. Uh, that idea is now three years old. In just three years, we've managed to have 300 million hours of code get done. Uh, that's unbelievable in terms of the number of students participating in this. And the students doing the hour of code around the entire world have written 20 billion lines of code. Uh, it's just an unbelievable achievement to have done that. Uh, and it's really thanks to you, to classrooms like yourselves, the teachers uh, that are, have been hosting the Hour of Code and the students participating in it. Uh, this morning, we rang the opening of the stock market in New York City. So the, the NASDAQ stock market, I had the wonderful opportunity to, to ring the bell to, to open the stock market. Uh, and I'm here in New York City right now. You can see Times Square right down there from my room up, up here. Uh, but I just wanted to say thank you to everybody who supported this campaign, and especially thank you to the teachers who have been so gracious to, to open your classroom. You know, Whether you're an English teacher or a math teacher or a history teacher or a tech teacher or a computer science teacher, so many of you have decided to add coding and computer science at least just for one hour and in many cases for an entire week uh, into your classroom and into your school. Uh, you know, My hat's off to you the teachers of this country and even the entire world who have, who have made this campaign a reality deserve a huge round of applause. So the students who are there, uh, make sure you, you all give a round of applause for your teachers uh, and thank them for introducing you to coding and computer science. Uh, I want to jump to a few questions, uh, and I have a number of questions that people are going to be asking over the, uh, over basically you know, the, the comments in the YouTube. So if you have any questions, Please type them in in there, and, and uh, I'll get them and then read them from here. Uh, the first question I, I want to start with is a sixth grader from Alex, sixth grader named Alexis in Oakland said, uh, I want to be a doctor when I grow up. How will learning things like the Hour of Code help me learn how to be a better doctor? Uh, this is a fantastic question because, you know, I often get asked, does everybody need to learn how to code? You know, not everybody you know, learns how to be a mechanic. You know, only the people who want to do that need to do that. And the difference with coding and computer science is computers and technology and software are changing absolutely everything. Uh, you don't just learn to code to become a doctor. You learn how computers work because computers are changing medicine. Computers are going to be changing transportation. They're going to be changing agriculture. Uh, you know, and the future of medicine in particular is deeply linked with technology. Today, when you go to see a doctor, they look inside your ear, they look inside your eye, they, they bang on your knee to see how things are going. The future is going to be you know, taking a pinprick and having a computer analyze exactly what's in your blood and telling you what's wrong with that. So if you want to be a doctor in the future, understanding how that technology works, what's the algorithm like, what's the data, how is the data being analyzed, what are the cybersecurity implications, all of those things are relevant no matter what field you want to go into. All right, my next question is from an eighth grader, Kayla, in Cincinnati. 
uh, asking what's been the best thing for you about learning to code. Uh, and you know, for this, uh, this is a personal question. You know, I started learning to code when I was about 10 years old. And uh, I fell in love with it immediately. It's, it was just such a great thing to be able to do. And the thing I love about writing code and coding has been the fact that when you write, that, that you can create whatever you want, and that you can get the computer to do what you want, and then you can have it do it as many times as you want. And it, you know, so it, it just means your imagination doesn't need to have any limits. Uh, it's one of the only things where you're not limited on a canvas to just a certain size. Your canvas is as big as the entire world, really. Uh, and the fact that you can create something like the, you know, the, the Minecraft tutorial that we built with Microsoft that has now had over 30 million people try that. Uh, you know, it, the, the team that got to do that, it's fun to make it, and, but it's especially fun to see it spread throughout the world. So the creativity and the impact are what I like the most. All right, the next question comes from a second grader named Chase in Gwinnett County, Georgia saying, sometimes I get stuck and I need help. Can you help me? Uh, but the answer I'd say, you know, everybody gets stuck with coding. Um, you know, computer science and coding are very different than uh, many other fields in that, you know, in math, there's a right answer and a wrong answer. And if you get it wrong, then you're wrong. There's no alternative. You're either right or you're wrong. Uh, in computer science, and when you're writing code, you're always making mistakes on your way to getting the right answer. In other words, very few people write the perfect code the very, very first time with no mistakes, and it's done. It's always got a mistake here, a little mistake there, a little mistake there. And you have to go through this iterative process of, oops, that was wrong. Let me fix that. And then, oh, I found something else was wrong, and let me fix that. Uh, but when you get stuck, the nice thing about doing the hour of code in a classroom is, you know what? Raise your hand and ask somebody else for help. Uh, this is a field where most of the teachers in the country and in the world have never themselves learned computer science. Uh, you know. If you're in school learning this right now, you may not realize that almost none of the teachers learned this when they were in school. The reason we're doing this as a global campaign is because we need not just the students to learn this, but we need the teachers to learn as well. So when you're stuck, instead of asking the teacher for help, just raise your hand and ask if any of the students can help you. Uh, and surely somebody in the classroom will have figured out the thing that they need help with. And you know that way, the whole class can get ahead. Uh, my next question is from a 10th grader named Manny in Piedmont County, Oklahoma, uh, saying, this is my first hour of code, but I want to keep going. What can I do? Uh, we've made this really easy. And first of all, the whole point of the hour of code isn't that you're going to get really good at, at coding in just one hour. The whole point is that you realize that this is more fun than you thought, and you want to do more. Uh, and if you want to learn more, uh, you know, if you visit the hour of code website, there's, a, there's actually links for how to go beyond the hour of code. The, the code.org tutorials, if you like the sort of Star Wars, Minecraft, Moana, Flappy Bird style tutorials we've made, there's, there's 200 hours of code worth of, of lesson plans in the courses we've made uh, that, that you can do that are like that. And for teachers as well, any teacher can start teaching, whether a full year course or just an after school club or integrating into to elementary school using the resources on code.org. So please do that. Don't stop at one one hour of code. Um, right. Next question is from Mohammed Sheikh Farham saying, uh, is basic C necessary for getting a deep knowledge in computer science? Uh, so computer science is, frankly, more than just coding. Uh, computer science is about learning algorithms, coding, data analysis. Uh, cybersecurity, networking, these are all different parts of the same field. You can learn how the internet works without ever writing a line of code. You can learn how encryption works without ever writing a line of code. Uh, but if you want to get good at the coding part to really create things yourself, pretty much any language you start with is, is the right place to start. I always get asked, do I need to learn JavaScript? Do I need to learn Python? What, what language should I start with? And really, whatever language you start with, switching to a new language is relatively easy. All the computer programming languages are pretty similar. It's not like switching from French to Spanish. You know, learning French, there's like 10,000 words you need to learn. And then when you want to switch to Spanish, the grammar is all different. Uh, whereas in coding, the grammar is almost always the same. And there's about 200 words you need to memorize. And so whatever language you start with, you can switch to another language in maybe a matter of three weeks. It's not too difficult. 
Um, Scott Summer says, one of my sixth grade students asks, how hard was it to create the Hour of Code? Uh, and this is from Ohio. Uh, that's a great question. I mean, I would say I am so overwhelmed by the, the fact that this thing that we created just three years ago is being used globally and done globally at such a scale. So uh, relative to how awesome it is, I would say it's been pretty easy. Um, because you could never imagine that you could, in just three years, create something that is being used from Mozambique to Zimbabwe to Armenia. Just today, the, the, the prime minister of Armenia did the Hour of Code. In Syrian refugee camps, they're doing it, the Hour of Code. At the southernmost tip of Chile, all the way to Siberia, students all around the globe are doing the Hour of Code. And that just is unbelievable. Uh, but in terms of what it take, took to create it, myself and my team have been working really hard on this. Uh, certainly the very first time we did this was the hardest I've ever worked in my life. But what's made the Hour of Code easy is that it's an idea that everybody wants to support. And what's made it the most easy is the teachers basically decided, this is great, we're going to do it. Uh, and teachers worldwide have basically embraced this idea. So really, it's because of the teachers, the educators, uh, you know, the teacher who just sent in this question, uh, Scott, it's people like you that have made the Hour of Code really easy. Um, from Nicole uh, writes Larson, uh, who's from Utah. She has a high school student who asks, what are some great strategies I can use to market myself and the skills I've learned from taking the, the csprinciplescode.org course? Uh, and so first of all, this is a student who's taking the CS Principles AP class that code.org is making for high school students. Uh, we now have about 19,000 students uh, taking AP CS Principles in our course. Uh, and I would say, first of all, for any of you that are not taking a full year course, after you try the Hour of Code, consider taking a full year course, because the real goal is to go beyond one hour and to really study computer science beyond that. But if you've gotten good enough that you can say, you know what, I got this, I can actually make things, the best way to market yourself, to market your skills, to get people to notice, is to make more things, whether it's to make websites, whether to make simple apps, things like that. Uh, and if you've used our App Lab tool right now, you make little apps, we're going to soon make you be able to use those apps and actually submit them to the Apple App Store or the Android App Store so you can even sell those apps. And then once you can point to those, it's a great way of, of talking about the way, the way you work and how it, how it works well. Um, a question from, uh, oops, let me find the next question. Next question is Shane Asselstein. Uh, it has a fifth grader from Hawaii, Shahira K asking, what was your inspiration? Uh, so for me, uh, there's, I have two inspirations for why I've done code.org. Uh, the first inspiration was just my life story. I started computer programming when I was 10 years old. And I was living at the time in Tehran, Iran, which was not a great place to grow up. Uh, you know, Tehran itself was great, but a war broke out and a revolution. And we were getting bombed. Literally, our, our neighborhood was getting bombed every single night. Uh, and so I didn't really know how my life would end up. And then one day, my dad brought me home a computer. And he said, this has no games on it. It has no apps on it. But here's a book. And if you can teach yourself to code, you, know, you can make your own games and make your own apps. Uh, and you know, I really didn't have another option to do in terms of anything fun. There was nothing fun to do. So basically, coding was my fun. Uh, and I'm now living the American dream. I've moved to America. And I, when my friends were you know, busing t tables at restaurants in ninth grade, I was working as a coder for tech companies as a summer intern. Uh, and I managed to do that to help pay my way through college. And I'm effectively living the American dream uh, as an immigrant. And I look around, and today the American dream feels a little bit broken. It just feels like people are struggling to make buy, and, and people are worried about whether they're going to keep their jobs. And meanwhile, the tech industry and the tech jobs, there's like 500,000 open jobs in this country, and they can't find enough great coders to fill those jobs. So part of the inspiration for, for creating code.org was to let other people have the same opportunity that I had. Um, but the real inspiration for, for the work we do at code.org, frankly, is how much the teachers have decided to make this happen. Uh, when I started, I had no idea that we'd get even 10,000 teachers interested in what we're doing. We're now at the point that almost 500,000 teachers globally are engaged either in the Hour of Code or code.org's ongoing tutorials. And that's what drives me every single day. It's, it's just unbelievable, the, the support from those teachers. Um, a question from Michael Harvey uh, in grade three in Maine, uh, asking, what is your favorite program or app that you ever created or were involved in? 
um, well, this is a little bit self-referential, but for me, by far the favorite thing that I've made uh, is the Star Wars Hour of Code tutorial. Uh, and the reason is I've, I was always a Star Wars fan growing up. Uh, and the idea that we could, you know, as part of code.org, create a tutorial that lets you control the droids and control R2-D2, and then we launched it as part of the, the movie launch campaign. Last year, the Star Wars movie was the biggest movie launch in history. Uh, and for code.org to have been part of that uh, was really special. Um, if you ever use that tutorial, I personally spent every sort of line of music in that tutorial was very sort of specifically picked out for me because when we first made the tutorial, there was no music in it. Uh, and then I was like, we got to get the Star Wars music in there. And it wasn't easy because the licensing for that music was different. We needed to get somebody else to give us those rights. Uh, and then I literally had two hours worth of all the Star Wars movies music to listen to. And I had to go through it and pick which 10 seconds do we use here and which 10 seconds do we use there. Um, and I think I, I definitely geeked out on it. I, I think I was the biggest Star Wars fan when we were making that. Uh, but making the music of that app was, was my little favorite contribution to the world. Um, I think we're out of questions, so uh, I'm going to wrap it up. I just wanted to say again, thank you so much for any of you, uh, whether you joined late uh, or you stuck around the whole time. Thank you for helping make the Hour of Code campaign such a great thing, such a worldwide celebration of computer science. Whether it's your first time coding today or whether you've been doing this for, for a year or whether you're you know, in a full year computer science class, it, please stick with coding in computer science. This is going to be the most important field as a student as you look into the 21st century, every single area you could go into, whether you want to become a doctor, a banker, a marketer, even if you want to go into something like baseball, computers and technology are changing things. And learning coding and computer science can help. Uh, this campaign has now reached 300 million hours of code. Uh, roughly one out of 10 students in the entire world have done the hour of code. Right now, as we've been talking, about 30,000 students globally just did the Hour of Code and just finished it in the last 10, 20 minutes. And another 30,000 students just started doing the Hour of Code. Uh, it's unbelievable the scale this thing has reached. And it's all thanks to the teachers and, and thanks to everybody in this room. So thank you for making this such a wonderful experience uh, for all the students in the world. And uh, enjoy your coding. Goodbye. <laughs>